Another, and this is a really interesting uh, area right now within the field of nutrition, is the role of polyunsaturated fats on this intestinal permeability. I think most of us, and I, I'd certainly put myself in this, in this category, were at one time or another taught that polyunsaturated fats were the, they were the heart healthy fats. Like those were the fats that you really wanted to use to lower your cholesterol levels, to, to produce less inflammation. And what the research has shown in the last several years is that in fact, polyunsaturated fats, both omega-6s as well as EPA, icosapentazoic acid, which is found in your marine oils, both of those cause a, a breakdown of the claudin and the occludin. Again, the tiny proteins that hold together the intestinal wall and keep the permeability at a healthy level. Both your omega-6s, which again, do have the ability to generate inflammation if they're out of balance, as well as EPA found in marine oil, both of those cause a marked drop-off in claudin and occludin production. And this allows that high level of intestinal permeability which people who have done clinical work with alcoholics have known for years because it's been shown that if you have a recovering alcoholic and you give them a diet higher in saturated fat with a very low level of polyunsaturated fat, that their livers do much, much better. You have markedly lower levels of liver enzymes and other indicators of an inflammation and in terms of what's going on with respect to lipid metabolism. So really the summary of this, of this paper by Kerpich, which I think is a great one, is that polyunsaturated fats, when they become more than 3% of an animal, and this has certainly been shown with humans as well, more than 3% of the diet, you're going to have a certain level of intestinal wall breakdown, a higher level of intestinal permeability. And it's important to make saturated fats really the foundation for the fats in the diet. So what about, again, I mentioned the EPA, icosapentazoic acid, which is, which is found in your fish oils, your cod liver oil, and things like that which at one time in my career I was a much bigger fan of than I am now. If you take a look at the work, and, and Sanjay Ghosh, I'm not, sure for, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the work of Sanjay Ghosh, but he's, he's in British Columbia, and his research now for over five years has shown that adding fish oil to the GI, to the microbiome, is very disadvantageous for most people, that it causes a higher level of inflammation than most of us have been led to believe. It causes aberrations within the, the innate immune response in that environment. So this is not necessarily the newest research, but it's one that I think most of us should appreciate when we start talking about the microbiome and intestinal permeability. Because I think, you know, a lot of us hear good things about fish oil. And what I'm sharing with you tonight has not been shown with eating oily fish or eating, you know, the actual source. This has only been shown with adding the oil to the microbiome. But what you get is you have high levels of prostaglandins of both the series two and the series three variety. And again, the prostaglandins, which are a type of icosanoids, those of the series two and four variety are typically associated with inflammation. And those are generated when we have higher levels of omega-6s in our diet. <clears throat> but what, you know, what Sanjay Ghosh and others have shown is that the EPA from marine oil, that causes also very significant aberrations within our prostaglandins of the series three variety. And this causes higher levels of tight junction permeability, and it causes a breakdown of the occludin. So what about other types of omega-3s to the rescue, like DHA? I think before we go down that street, it's important to understand that DHA has an ability, unlike any other long-chain fatty acid, to disrupt the lipid raft model, which really explains how the cell membrane allows particular molecules across in terms of transportation. And what happens is when you add a DHA-rich oil to this cellular lipid model, it starts to push the protein channels aside, and it starts to really displace the high levels of cholesterol and other types of lipids that are important for holding together that type of cell membrane integrity. So even the DHA-rich marine oil also has the potential, again, to cause higher levels of permeability, not only within the tight junctions, but within the cell membrane itself. So it's really important to, uh, you know, to question the addition of marine oils as much as it is the addition of omega-6 rich oils, such as canola oil, corn oil, soy oil, most of those which, again, have been on our radar for some time. So now we've got another two pieces to this, to this mosaic that I'm trying to create, and that's 
your polyunsaturated rich oils of both the omega-6 and the omega-3 variety. Although I will note that flax oil, flax oil, which is again an omega-3 rich oil, but it's not rich in the long chain omega-3s, flax oil has not been shown to cause that type of disruption within the microbiome or that type of disruption within those tight junction and the level of permeability there. So we have omega-6 and omega-3 rich oils, especially the marine oils, and we have fructose contributing to both a breakdown in these tight junctions as well as some level of dysbiosis.